Joining me today on NYSE Floor Talk is Harry Sommer. He is the president and CEO at Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings. Harry, fantastic to have you here. Thanks for joining me today. Judy, thanks for having me on. My pleasure. So you're here today at the New York Stock Exchange. You held your investor day here today. Um, so you introduced a new four pillar strategy across your brands. Tell me about this new strategy. Sure. So it starts with the new vision, which we say uh, uh, vacation better, experience more, which we think is a call to action for our 41,000 crew members and staff around the world to really provide our guests with extraordinary vacation experiences. Um, past that, we hope that that message is going to re resonate quite well with the three million people that travel on our cruises each year. So we're very excited. The actual strategy or the pillars that you mentioned that get behind that vision uh, revolve around people, um, our product, our growth platform, and our performance. So I'll just go into each one for a couple of seconds. People really are the core of who we are. We have, as I mentioned before, 41,000 crew and staff around the world, and we are committed to investing them, developing them, and making them the best that they can possibly be. Our product speaks for itself, but we are committed, as I said before, to deliver exceptional vacations and to give guests experiences that they value and are willing to pay for. Uh, the next thing is about our growth platform. We announced a few weeks ago that we have eight new ships that we've ordered uh, for all three of our brands, Norwegian Cruise Line, Oceana Cruises, and Region 7 Sea Cruises, that are all gonna be brand new platforms and the largest ships that we ever built for those brands. These large platforms are gonna allow us to have new amenities and experiences for our guests. We're especially looking to attract even more millennials and Gen Zs, uh, and we think these new experiences are gonna be perfect for them. And the larger platforms also allow us to become more efficient. We try to say that we have a balance between what we call return on experience and ROX and return on investment of ROI. And if we get that balance right, it leads to the fourth pillar, which is performance. Outstanding financial performance that we believe can unlock shareholder value. Now, Harry, how does a data-driven approach provide better and more valuable experiences for your guests? So listen, I, I think before, under the previous CEO, great guy. I love him. He was my mentor for 32 years, but he ran the company a lot by gut feel. And we are super committed to listening to what our guests have to say. In any given week, there are anywhere between 55 and 60,000 guests traveling on any of our 32 ships around the world. And we can ask them what they want. We can experiment. We can see what they ask for. We can see what they value. We can see what they're willing to pay for. And when we get that data, it can guide what we do moving forward. You know, it can be from everything, from menu selection to entertainment, to the ports we visit. To the, to the amenities that we offer on board the ship. The entire gamut of the product that we can provide is driven with what guests want, what they value, and they're willing to pay for. Now, how about your sale and sustain initiative? How does that fit into your new strategy? And what steps are you taking to improve sustainability? Sure, so we are super committed to doing our share to make the world a better place to be. I have three children of myself, which we talked about offline before the interview, and I wanna make this place, leave the world a better place for them than when I came. Uh, so we reiterated or reaffirmed our commitment to reduce our greenhouse gas intensity by 10% in 2026 by 2030, but then further, reduce it by 30% by 2030, and we're committed to having zero net greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. We are doing things across the board from alternative fuels, technology on board the ship, but not just with decarbonization, also with recycling uh, um, waste, uh, producing our own water on board the ships and steps like that to really do our best to be good stewards in the environment. Harry, talk about your new financial plan and targets for the medium term. Sure, so today as part of our investor day, we discussed four new targets which we're super passionate about and we believe are imminently attainable. It starts with a simple financial algorithm where we plan to grow revenue more than unit cost by two and a half percent a year. And if we can do that, it leads to four good things. The first is we return to our historical adjusted EBITDA margins of 39%, which is what we had pre-COVID. Number two, it allows us to obtain a, an adjusted EPS of $2.45 by 2026, which is a 30% CAGR off our new guidance for 2024 to 2026 after doubling EPS from 23 to 24. So we're very excited about the growth ahead. It allows us to generate $7 billion of net cash flow for operating, which we'll yeah. use substantially for measured CapEx and expansion, 
but mostly to delever the business and strengthen our balance sheet to allow us to get our leverage down to four and a half times, which is down for the 7.3 times it was at the end of last year. And lastly, that all leads to record return on invested capital of 12%, the highest number that the company's ever achieved. And we believe these are just the starting points. We believe when we look to 27 and beyond, we can even achieve over those goals. And finally, Harry, tell me, what's the state of the cruise industry post-pandemic? I'll tell you, you know, it, it, there was a long runway and we were, we were one of the industries that was really heavily penalized in 20 and 21, but I'm pleased to say it's behind us and demand is now at record levels. We see record book positions, record pricing for the future. Guests are having a wonderful time visiting the 700 ports around the world that we go to. Cruising is back. Cruising is back. <laughs> well, Harry, it's been wonderful to talk with you. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk today. Thank you, Judy.